This video is about installing iNav Clean Flight on the B Rotor flight controller, and the reason for that is that iNav has more enhanced GPS features. iNav is really a fork off Clean Flight uh, with a focus on better GPS handling. It currently supports position hold, return to home with predefined climb, waypoints, and follow me. And this is both for airplanes and multi rotors. Now, iNav has uh, some settings that are different than the stock clean flight settings. And to simply apply the restored settings from your older clean flight causes problems. So, the first thing you need to do is take screenshots of all your configurations from your stock clean flight. So, here's some screenshots that I've taken of my B rotor setup my clean flight setup on my B rotor and this was for a flying wing but I just took basically screenshots of each of the configuration screens here's the OSD I recorded that too although I don't think this will be a problem you don't have to change your OSD settings but I took a screenshot of that anyway and after that I went ahead and started the flashing procedure and we'll get into that now but before we do let's just look at a little flight video that I did the other day with the iNav installed and you can see the home arrow follows the home position quite well and the altitude which is on the right ladder is working pretty good that's from the barometer and it also records the speed uh, fairly well too so those features right there are working and I'm pretty happy with it now the procedure we're going to use for flashing can be found in the B rotor manual just scroll down to the bottom and down the bottom are the steps that you need to do the flashing. On RC Groups there's an excellent thread on installing the firmware and also on setting it up so I'll put a link to that underneath the video and there's some links right in this at the top of the thread that'll take you to the wiki that you you need to read about and also how to get the iNav firmware. You also need the Clean Flight Configurator app that runs out of Google Chrome, and you can get that from the uh, Google downloads on the Google Store. There's also a link in the iNav wiki where you can download the firmware. And I tried to use the uh, iNav NAS version first, but it really didn't work. But there is a recommendation on RC Groups to use the SP Racing Hex or SP Racing F3. So that's the one I chose. So I'm putting all my tools and links in one folder here. I've got the SP Racing Hex and the, a link to the Clean Flight Configurator app right in this folder. So now we can start the flashing procedure. So launch the Clean Flight Configurator and then don't connect but go over here and click on firmware right here. Make sure you have these settings according to the directions from the B Rotor manual. Okay, now just uh, click and load your file, your hex file right here, SP Racing, and now click Flash, and it'll fail if you, do, if you don't do one more thing. So what you have to do is hold the button in on the B rotor while you plug it into the USB port, and then after that you can let go of the button, and then go ahead and load your hex file, and then flash it. And if it works, it should say that it's complete or successful. So after the flashing, go ahead and unplug the USB cable, and then plug it back in, and click on the Connect button. Now you'll notice in the setup, the picture of my quadcopter is upside down, but actually I don't even have a quadcopter, I'm using a pop wing. So right now I haven't done any of the configuration, so we need to go ahead and do that now. So I went ahead and looked at all my screenshots and plugged in the values that I had from my stock clean flight install into the nav clean flight. And now let's look at configuring the rest. So this is the PID tuning tab right here and I'm just going to use the stock values that came with it. But first you need to change to Lux Float for the B rotor flight controller because that's what it works with. And then go ahead and save it to make sure you have the values. And then down at the bottom here, there's some levels you can change for a couple of the modes. I like to bring my angle mode up to give me a little more control on my control surfaces in angle mode. And I don't worry about changing the RC rates. I just change that to get more control. Okay, so that's it there for now on the PID screen. So one thing that's different in iNav, there's actually a six-step accelerometer 
calibration process. It doesn't do level, flat and level. You just do the six, the six steps. So what you do is do each step and calibrate it six times. And then you go into the CLI to see what the difference is because this is how you tell if it's actually worked. If it's 4096 and it really hasn't worked and no values have gone in yet, so you might have done something wrong during the calibration. So let's go ahead and return back to the calibration and see if we can get this to change. So I'm looking at the calibration instructions from the wiki here and let's just go ahead and start the calibration. So I don't have a magnetometer on mine. So that's calibrating on a level surface. Now we'll go with upside down and calibrate it again. Okay. Next one is to the right and we'll go ahead and calibrate it again. You see how we have to do all these steps. Now next one is up and we'll go ahead and push the calibration again. Now to the left, calibrate again and now down and we'll calibrate again. Okay now let's take a look at the CLI and see if it worked. Okay, let's go into the CLI and type dump and then just hit enter. And now let's go see if the settings actually changed. Go up a little more in halfway. So, okay, so now they've changed and you can see it's not 4096 anymore and also these three values have changed. So, it's looking pretty good. Okay, then we go ahead and save the settings for the CLI by typing in save and then just hitting enter. That's just to make sure that they actually get written. I just think it's a good idea to do that. And another thing you want to do is back up all of your settings right on this button here to make sure that you've saved everything you've done. And you can, I previously backed it up, but I'm just going to back it up again just to make sure. Okay, another thing that's different in INAP Clean Flight is that if you have your board in a strange orientation and you want to change it, like mine is upside down, you have to use a factor of 10. Now, the factor of 10 is multiplied by, say, 180 for me, so that gives me 1800. But you can't just type it in here. You have to do it in the CLI. So you go into the CLI because you can't go more than 360, I believe, in the main screen. So in here, you can see you just scroll up a little bit above where we were before. And here's the thing. It's a line, board, roll, pitch, and yaw. And this is where you do it. So I just put in 1800. But if you don't know the command, you can just copy it from here and then paste it in down the bottom and then change this value to whatever you need. In my case, it was uh, 1800. But then you just go ahead and save the settings after that to write it to the board. So INAV has a lot of new features such as return to home and an enhanced failsafe. But I'm not going to get into that here. This is just to install the firmware. Now, I may do another video later to uh, talk about return to home and failsafe and things like that. But uh, there's a, there are some differences in the modes, too, that we probably need to talk about. But I didn't want to get into that here. But uh, I'll, I just wanted to get the firmware installed and show you how to do it. Here, play.